The college was founded in 1784 and the anatomy department was established the following year. So the initial professors of anatomy tended to teach systematically. So they'd tell you all the arteries one week and all the veins the next week. And a student called Abraham Collis from Kilkenny came to the college. He didn't like this and he actually did something about it. So having graduated from the college and then done some training in London, he revolutionized the way anatomy was taught by teaching it regionally. So you do the chest or the abdomen or the thigh. And that made an awful lot more sense if you're going to operate on the region. He wrote this textbook, Treatise on Surgical Anatomy, in 1811. And three years later, he published his uh, paper on what's now known as the Collis Fracture. So he was able to observe this, describe how it happened, and then figure out how to treat it. That has really set the basis of teaching in the department because it's always practically based. And subsequent professors of anatomy, and, and I'm the 29th in the series, have tried to keep this going. So it's a method of, of being able to explain to the students where everything is, helping them to discover it themselves. And what's unique about the college is we have a group of retired surgeons called surgeon prosectors who help show them around the body here in the anatomy room. This is the one place that you get this sort of level of surgical experience being brought to bear on an undergraduate medical school. One of the great things about teaching anatomy is it doesn't change very much. So that gives you some time to think about what you might do with it. From Collis's point of view, it was to apply anatomy to surgical practice. And he was able to observe what surgeons were doing, observe how injuries occurred, and work out approaches to dealing with it. That observational approach has worked its way through to our research here in the department. So this is where regenerative medicine comes in. And we have a team of researchers from engineers, medics, surgeons, scientists, observing how the tissue normally works, how the joint normally functions, is a very good start in trying to figure out how to replace it or to replace the tissue part. So we're renaming the department, the Department of Anatomy and Regenerative Medicine, to recognize the contributions on both sides of the house, on teaching of anatomy and on the research being done in the area of regenerative medicine.